Good morning. I wanted to take some time today to talk about uh, stretching. There's common misconceptions when it comes to how we should stretch, when we should stretch, etc. Um, independent or in uh, context of the workout setting. So I thought today I'd, I'd, t I'd take you through a few uh, different stretching types and talk to you a little bit about the theory behind why we stretch and when we should stretch. So there's two basic types of stretching. Uh, static, meaning staying still, uh, and dynamic, more movement oriented stretching. A lot of people still are using static stretching before their workouts. And when we go through these, I'll pinpoint which ones are which and, and where we should use them. Um, the body needs to be warm in order to prevent injury when it comes to stretching. But the body has to be prepared for what it's going to be doing next. So, aka your workouts. So we want to get you into a situation where you're um, taking those joints through the range of motion that you're going to be using in your workout ahead of your workout. But we don't want to put those uh, joints and the muscles uh, that cross those joints um, on too much stretch and strain before the body's warm. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start with a dynamic warm up and I'm going to bring you through probably five, maybe even six different movement patterns that would adequately prepare your body for uh, a total body workout. And then at the end, we're going to do some static stretching that will allow you uh, four or five different choices uh, that you can do after your workout uh, to, to safely elongate those muscles uh, that kind of bind us down and inhibit uh, muscle function, inhibit uh, correct biomechanics, and inhibit correct posture. So first, the dynamic warm-up, uh, and this should be about anywhere from five to ten minutes in length. Uh, we want to hit kind of lower body movements, upper body movements, and combined movements. Um, and as far as the timing for these, uh, for this video, I'm just going to go probably about 20 seconds. But when you do your uh, warm-up, you can do 30 seconds uh, each movement, uh, give or take. Again, you want to be somewhere around that five to ten minute mark with your warm-up and the same thing for your cool down. Um, so the first one I'll show you is a basic march, and I have a chair here. Um, we'll be using the deck railing uh, for a couple things as well. Um, so march, and we're trying to kind of slowly get that heart rate elevated from baseline. If you need that chair for support, you can use it. And as you go through this, there's a couple things uh, that you can think about. One is varying your speed, so slow and fast, okay? Uh, each one of it brings a different type of challenge. And the last variable on this would be a high range of motion, bringing that knee up as high as you can go. So this is the marching. And then I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see the next dynamic movement which would be kind of just activating your hamstring muscles, bringing the heel to the bum. Some of these uh, stretches and warm-up movements you have seen in other videos, but we're, we're trying to package these together and give you a little bit of the theory behind why we're doing what we're doing. So again, you're, you're somewhere around 30 seconds of this. And you can also play with the, the speed on this one. Hold, 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 um, just to kind of vary the, the contraction speed here. All right, now we're gonna get into some different stepping patterns. The first one we're gonna do is we're gonna just step laterally and weight shift, and then step the other side and weight shift. Again, we're preparing the body for the type of movements that you would do in your normal workout routine. 
So I'm just stepping and weight shifting. Trying to get the bum heading backwards on this. So after about 30 seconds, we can move on to the next one. We're actually going to go forward on this next one. So we're going to go forward, back, a little bit to the side, back, and then over. And again, this is not a, a true lunge. We're just shifting your body weight onto that front foot. When you're on your own, you can do about 30 seconds or so on each side. Okay. And then we'll switch sides 45 degrees and out. Be mindful. Um, the other thing that the dynamic warm, -out, warm up will provide is a little bit of balance challenge as well. We're doing a single leg movement here. So you're getting some balance as well. All right. Now, we've hit a lot of lower body. Those are the big muscles. That's going to kind of get that heart rate going um, a little bit more quickly than, uh, say, just an upper body uh, movement pattern warm up. But we do want to make sure that upper body is warm. So we're going to do a couple combined movements. The first is a step back and an arm reach. And we're just alternating our feet. Kind of getting those arms into the mix. And again, you can vary your speed. You can pick it up a little bit. And then you can slow it down and stick and extend. So you can play around with your movement speed. Okay. Now we want to get some rotation in as well. So I'm going to step back and reach and rotate. And then I'm going to switch sides. Reach and rotate. We want to move through our hips, move through our hips. We don't want to twist without moving the hips. Reach. Now in other videos we've shown you strengthening uh, mini circuits or mini workouts and hopefully when you see this dynamic warm-up you can start to apply what this might be preparing you for in the actual workout. So I'm going to come down here. Uh, the last upper body that we'll show is a basic push-pull. So we're starting with the arms up here, um, what we would call 90 degrees and 90-90. So 90 at the elbow, 90 at the shoulder. And we're pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling. Okay, just getting that upper body ready for what we might be doing. Maybe it's wall push-ups. Maybe it's a band row. Just getting that upper body ready for what we're doing. All right, so that would be an example of a dynamic uh, warm-up. We didn't, you know, spend as much time as you would if you were to do this live. Again, five to ten minutes, 30 seconds per uh, kind of station or exercise. Um, the next thing I want to get into is what you would do at the end. Um, or towards the end of your workout, when your body's the warmest, when it's the safest to do uh, this, this static stretching, when it's the uh, most efficient time to do the static stretching. Um, what we want to do with static stretching, just coming back to the theory, is we want to create lasting change in muscle length. And the best way to do that is when the muscle is warm. And when you've gone through a whole litany of different uh, full body uh, strength exercises. Um, so we're going to pick, uh, I think, four or five different uh, static stretches. We're going to start with the lower body once again. So I have the chair here, and I'm going to bring this over to uh, the rail. So I like a standing hamstring stretch because you get this ba balance component by standing on single leg, and you also have a nice way to uh, manipulate whether it's more stretch or less stretch uh, as you go through it. So you've got something to your side to hold on to. The foot is up, okay, and my toes kind of pointed neutral or even down a little bit. My bum's back, and my hips are square. We don't want to be open up over here with your hips. We want to be straight forward. And I'm just holding this for about 30 seconds. If you need more stretch, 
you come down lower, you can feel that hamstring be put on more stretch. If you need less stretch, come up taller and you can pull your leg a little bit closer to you. We would go 30 seconds or somewhere about that on each side. 30 to 60 seconds really is where we want to be. You may feel that there's, a, there's more stretch on one side than the other. That's normal. So after my 30 second holds on each side, I'm going to come back down. So we just stretched the hamstring muscles, a group of muscles back here. Now we're going to stretch your quadriceps. And this, this stretch here that I'm going to show you it is not kind of one of the more popular ones, but it's one that we found that has worked well um, uh, for our population. So we're sticking that leg behind through the chair, right through the middle of the chair, and then you're sitting up nice and tall. Now from this position, you're kind of tilting your pelvis backwards, then you're squeezing the bum on the side that you're stretching. So in this case, I'm squeezing my left bum. I'm feeling a nice stretch right down through here. After about a 30 second hold, using nice tall posture, I'm gonna switch, stick that other leg behind, squeeze the bum, a little tilt of the pelvis here, and we're gonna hold for 30 seconds. There's different variations you can add. You can get a little bit of extension through the upper body as you're stretching if you want. You can do a little bit of side bending away from the side that you're stretching. After 30 seconds, we're, we'll be all set with this. I'm going to stand up again, and you notice I'm doing what we call weight-bearing and non-weight-bearing bow. Um, you saw this on my corrective exercise video, but I'm going to give you kind of a, a basic version of that hip flexor stretch. So back leg and foot are straight, straight. front leg is slightly bent, and we're going to go pelvic tilt, bum squeeze, and we're just going to hold this. If you need more stretch, you can come down into that lunge a little bit more with that front leg, and our chest is staying high. After 30 seconds, we're switching. Foot is pointing straight ahead. And I'm going to show you a lateral view. A lot of times people get that foot turned out. We want that foot straight ahead. Again, if you need something for balance. And this is a this is a tandem stance here. Okay, so if you see my feet, they're going straight ahead. So this is a balance challenge. Because my base of support is, is certainly altered from what our normal stance would be need more stretch, come down, leg back. Right. So we've been through three lower body. We're going to do one more lower body and I'll give you a couple of So, calf stretch. This foot is straight. Not out here, not in here. Straight ahead. And I'm leaning forward, bending that front leg. The heel is on the ground. The heel of my back leg is on the ground, or should be on the ground. We're going to hold for 30 seconds. You should be feeling this stretch here. For those of you that have really tight hip flexors, you're going to feel the stretch up in the hip flexor as well. And then we'll switch sides. Back leg straight, foot is straight ahead. Leaning forward. I definitely don't do these enough. All right, so a uh, couple of upper body. So we covered it in corrective exercise, but I wanted to show you again um, a nice uh, static stretch to work into your end of workout routine. We're gonna come over to the wall here and my pinkies are against the wall. I've got a staggered stance and I'm gonna come down and toward the wall. Practice deep nose breathing as you do this. In through the nose, out through the mouth. After about 30 seconds, take a step back. And, and these static stretches, you want to go through about two sets of the 30 to 60 second holds on each side. 
Okay, the last uh, static stretch that I'll show you is uh, a tricep in the shoulder uh, stretch. You can do this in standing or seated. I'm going to show you in standing today. The seated version is you just sit down. So I'm going to reach back like I'm scratching my back. I'm going to take my elbow with my opposite hand and I'm going to push straight back. So we're not going out here. We're going straight back. And I'm just holding this for that 30 second duration. If you need more stretch on this, you would provide more force backwards. And if you need less, you just let that arm relax a little bit. Some folks are so tight that even getting up here is a challenge, which no problem. You would just go from here, give a little resistance, and you got that nice stretch going here. Switch sides, reach back. My elbow wants to naturally bow out here. You're pulling that in toward your ear, driving straight back. And you're getting your tricep, but you're also stretching out your shoulder joint as well with this. And then come down. So this whole series of things hopefully identified why we want to use dynamic warm-up at the beginning of the workout versus static stretching gave you a series of dynamic warm-up movements to use in your own workouts talked about why we want to do static stretching at the end and gave you a series of static stretches to do uh, upper and lower body at the end have a great week guys thanks so much